From Reductress, I'm Damian Kronfeld. And I'm Sarah Pavolardo. And this is the Reductress Minute. On this week's episode, we'll be talking about terms of endearment that are disgusting unless an Italian guy is saying them, how to get high but not so high that you start thinking about climate change, and will this iced coffee give you anxiety, diarrhea, or a will to live? And finally, I didn't come to this corn maze to make friends, read by Lauren Lapkus. We're back after so long. (laughs) So long. Well, yeah, years. I don't think that um, anyone has heard from us since literal 2018. 2018. It's been a while. When I was an intern. You couldn't legally drink. You couldn't. No. You couldn't legally host a podcast. No. But now you can. And I tried back then, but (laughs) here at Reductress, (laughs) we love the law. (laughs) <laughs> we do. So I couldn't break it. Yeah. Um, so fortunately, you know, those laws have evolved and um, I've come and you're here. We've come so <laughs> far. So we're back at the Reductress Minute and we've got a few updates. I mean, namely, uh, we've got new hosts. Um, it's me, Sarah, Damien, and our contributor, Madison Dillard, who you're going to meet a little later on. She's looking right at us right now. She's smiling. Yeah, but she can't talk yet. We got back in the office in June, right? Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, after working remotely for well over a year, we got back and it's been a huge adjustment just working in the office, even two days a week. Absolutely. I mean, I struggle every day to be a person sure. around other people. I mean, how has your experience been back in the office? I mean, I don't know if I've ever confess this to you but maybe now is the time (laughs) on air (laughs) live bitch (laughs) live this is live (laughs) by the way um is that like throughout lockdown I would oftentimes sort of wake up 10 to 5 minutes before the workday began that's beautiful and (laughs) I think it was good because I was almost in a state between like waking and dream life So I think I was actually more creative and better at my job. Definitely. I mean, I like to go through half the workday, half asleep. Yeah. And then it just flies by, baby. (laughs) Um, Yes. Yeah. But we are now back in the office some some days of the week. Not too many. Um, Just the right amount. Yeah. Just the right amount. And we have like cool stuff. We have cold brew. And today we got Twix. Yeah. We also have hot brew. (laughs) Yes. Also known as coffee a coffee maker uh, and which is honestly pretty exciting for us i mean i don't know I'm, I'm drinking my second macchiato of the day that i don't need and i think it's great i'm still literally too scared to try to use it oh i'm, I'm vibrating <laughs> awesome so damien do you want to tell us what's been trending on reductress lately i was hoping that you would ask me that here's what's trending on reductress lately Study finds doing CPR to tune of Hey Soul Sister worse than not doing CPR at all. Yeah, it actually can kill them faster, I think. It can. And it's also an interesting ethical dilemma. Because is it worse to watch someone die or to say my heart is bound to beat right out my untrimmed chest? Oh, God. Yeah, that's a tough one. Uh, We also have gatekeeping. This three-headed dog won't let me into hell. Ouch. It's just like, why is it that everyone in hell is just like a cis white man? So messed up. It's so fucked up. I'm sorry. Ugh, Cerberus, do better. Do better. Um, more dog-related content. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Aw, this dog learned to communicate with buttons and asked to die. Oh my god, that's so cute. This is sweet. It's amazing how far we've come. I know, right? It was like, a couple years ago, I didn't even know dogs could, like, want or uh, know they exist. So it's only natural that, you know, they would eventually ask us to please kill me now. Yeah. My existence is miserable. They're reflecting on the world around them and they don't like what they see. And can you blame them? No. Absolutely not. So we think that's pretty cute. So we're super excited to have a new intern this fall. She's super quirky and fun. She's actually one of those girls who will sit on the floor even when there's an available chair. Yeah. So we wanted to get her on the mic to tell us a little bit more, but oh my God, she's so quirky. Look at her. 
She is literally sitting on the floor right now and will not get up. She refuses to sit on a chair. Uh, how cute is that? Addie, what are you doing down there? Uh, oh, she's busy. I think the shrieking is a cultural thing. Um, like two quirky girls who sit on the floor. I mean, she's from like Minnesota. Ugh, I love her. Anyway, there's one thing we love to do in the reductress office, and that's getting high. We're pretty much getting high all the time. So we wanted to give you some tips on how to get high, but not so high that you start to think about climate change. Right. That's a super, super important thing about getting high is to not think about how the world is dying. Mm -hmm. uh, so thanks again to Madeline Fellows for contributing here. Uh, so first off, you want to start small. Mm. Don't take an edible, then take a massive bong rip just because you can't wait for it to kick in. Have a little patience. And if you start to feel the full weight of how humans have destroyed the earth in pursuit of profit, then you've had enough. Right, like put the bong down. Come on. Uh, next up, you're going to want to avoid the urge to watch planet Earth. It won't be easy. No, no. Like we get it. Everyone likes to get a little stoned and then watch the pretty fish. But it's like... All you're going to think about is how those fish no longer have like a coral reef to, to hide mm -hmm. in. And then, you know, mm -hmm. the whole ecosystem just comes crashing down and there you are having a bad trip. And also remember that no matter what, rich people will move to Mars and be fine. That's right. Uh, no matter what happens, the rich people are going to be OK. Um, that's just another thing that you don't actually want to think about when you're high. Now that mm -hmm. I think about it. No. Next, you're going to want to surround yourself with nature, but not too much nature because again uh there's going to be like no nature in a few years if uh we keep playing our cards wrong uh um, yeah. so as tempting as it is to like sit in the grass and look at the sky just like don't do it too much maybe just open a window yeah yeah just like feel a little breeze and you're also going to want to hang out with friends who you trust to not tell you too much of the truth Right. You know, like you want the friend who like when you're like, how do I look today? They're like, you look great mm -hmm. um, and give no other detail beyond a that. liar, a sort of liar. Yeah. Friend. But like, you know, a well-intentioned liar. Yeah. Um, that's the kind of person you want to be around in this case when you're like, um, is everything falling apart? They're going to be like, no. So last but not least, maybe just don't get high tonight at all. Yeah. Yeah. Just don't take a night off. Put it down. You know? Anyway, we're all going to die, so. Yeah, so uh, good luck toking it up tonight. <laughs> uh, we're going to take a quick break and be right back. So, Damien, uh, I've got some news for you. Tell me. Uh, did you know that Reductress has a 2022 daily calendar coming out this season? I did know that because I work here. Uh, that's right. We do have a brand new 2022 daily tearaway calendar coming out this October, and it's available for pre-order on our site, Shop Reductress. So if you want to order ahead uh, in anticipation for the holiday season, you can order multiple of them and get them shipped right to you in October. October. So go to shop.reductress.com to pre-order our calendar and see everything else that we have in the store. You're going to love it. You're going to. Uh, one other thing we've got going on. Uh, Reductress has a show at the Bell House in Brooklyn this October 19th. That's on a Tuesday and we've got a great lineup. Uh, it's hosted by Chanel Ali and has Mary Beth Barone. Larry Owens, Kate Willett, and Dave Mazzoni, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Killer lineup. That's right. Killer show to come. Oh, hell yes. Um, you can get tickets at reductress.com slash events or at thebellhouse.com. And uh, we'll see you there because we will physically be there. You can actually stalk us if you want. Don't do it. But, but you could. But you could. We're not saying, like, do it, but, but also... Come really find us. A little flattering. Yeah, yeah. We're pretty lonely, quiet people. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Welcome back. So, on to the next uh, hot. Uh, <laughs> okay, Manic Pixie Dream Girl, you can't sit on the wall. <laughs> Seriously, this is so cute, but also not safe. <laughs> Also, not to talk shit, but this morning on the elevator, I was like, Addie, how was your weekend? And her eyes literally rolled back into her head, like all the way back. I could only see white. And I was like, sorry, am I boring you? <laughs> that just sounds like quirky girl behavior to me. I guess. 
anyway, we've got a pretty serious topic to discuss now. Mm, Yes. And that is the fact that men can say some pretty disgusting things to women. Yeah. Even when they think they're saying something nice, it can come off absolutely disgusting and offensive. Yeah, unless, you know, an Italian man is saying them. Right, so definitely not Chris Pratt. Right, absolutely not. Um, So here are a couple of terms of endearment that are absolutely disgusting unless an Italian man is saying them. Yeah. Um, First off, baby. (sighs) Offensive. I mean, offensive from a, a non-Italian. Yeah. I mean, it's just so disgusting when you're walking down the street and someone's like, hey, baby. And it's just like stupid. But, you know, let's just say you're walking in Rio Maggiore or something mm-hmm. like that. And someone's like, a baby. Baby. A baby. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, like, it's cute. You know, I'm just like, oh. That makes me smile. Right. Right. You know. Uh, next up, Gorgeous. Like, gorgeous? Really? Don't reduce me to what I am. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Am I gorgeous? Yes. But don't don't say it. Don't tell me that. Like, at least go on a date first with me. Yes. Before you catcall me. Yes. Always start catcalling after you're dating. Precisely. Gorgeous? This one is interesting because it's in the gray area where you might be able to pull this off if you are an Italian-American. Let's say you're also walking through Staten Island Mm -hmm. and someone is like, (laughs) gorgeous. (laughs) Sarah, (laughs) I don't think you've been to Staten Island. No, I actually haven't. (laughs) Tell me what it's like. Um, I think it would be like, Hey, gorgeous. Yeah, yeah that, that's what they do in the movies. You're right, and it's so endearing. That's from film and life. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, so again, it's just like super cute, not gross. Yes, um, but know your place. Know your place, exactly. Um, mm. So next up we have Bellissima, which again, like fucking gross. If someone just was like, hey, Bellissima, first of all... Weird. Ask me my pronouns first, but also... <laughs> If you are Italian and you say, bellissima, bellissima, bellissima I'm like, ah! It transcends gender. Yeah, honestly, it does. I feel like it's kind of like the royal bellissima for everyone. Mm. Uh, and also just so, so cute. Like, get over here. I want to give you a little kiss. A little Italian man. <laughs> um, there's also the classic, um, a bowl of spaghetti. Right, right, right. Like, um, if you're you know, in the office and a coworker Ugh. is like, calls you a bowl of spaghetti, like they do. It's Not appropriate. Like, it's fucked up. And go to HR if they do. Like, don't, don't sell yourself short. You don't deserve that kind of treatment. Mm. On the other hand, you know, right. if someone's like, you're a bowl of spaghetti. Ah, uh, my little bowl of spaghetti. My bowl of spaghetti. I want to slurp you up into my mouth. You will covered in the sauce i want to eat you whole um <laughs> that's lovely adorable. it's adorable it's so i mean the italians just have such a way with words they do know? they do it's great there's a poetry to that yeah uh next up we have sugar tits mm-hmm. which again that's just like an hr violation right off the bat one of the most disgusting things a person can say right but if let's say like a a a medium-sized tan man in a Speedo smoking a pack of Marlboro Reds is like, sugar teats. Sugar teats. Yes. Um, is that Italian? Does that sound Italian? That, is, that, is that convincingly I think, Italian? I don't know. I'm picturing for some reason like a Swede now. Uh, they yeah. would never, though. They would never. Culturally. No, no. They would never even speak. Um, sugar tits... In Italian, by which I mean with an Italian accent. You're right. Which if, could you demonstrate? Because I'm a little bit okay. slippy on that. Ah, sugar tits. Sugar, sugar tits. And that's not even. It's not sexual. You no. would say that to your grandma. Exactly. And I do. <laughs> she died, but I still do. Um, and my grandmother, just for the record, I am Italian, as you can tell from my extremely long last name. Um, yeah, that's why it's okay for us to this talk is about a t- Yeah, this. I mean, like all of whatever it is, I can't actually do an Italian accent. However, I can do one <laughs> legally. Um, so last on the list, we have, um, it's kind of hard to put into words, but like mm. um, 
hand gesture. Yeah, I'm Sarah's a- doing one now. And it's offensive. It is, it is. I mean, like, I feel kind of dirty even doing it in the room. Yeah. Um, it's weird. Uh, but, you know, again, if someone is, like, doing this um, hand gesture, but in <laughs> again, an Italian yeah. way, it's very sweet. And to be clear, this could be any hand gesture at all. Yeah. It really doesn't matter what. As long as it's done in an Italian way by an Italian man, it's Italian. It's just... That's exactly right. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of beautiful. So... Salute, uh, or should I say, <laughs> don't salute salute. <laughs> to all the Italian men out there who um, just can get away with saying some really sweet things that other people cannot. We love you, Italian men. That's right. Do you think that we have a lot of um, Italian men readers of the site? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I would say, what sh- percentage? I, of, of, okay. Because I have like very, you know, good demographic data on hand. Yeah. I would say about one. One percent. One, Itali- one Italian. Oh, man. one Italian. Just one Italian man. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> this is for like, you, Anthony. He's like making some adorable hand gestures right now. I just know it. <laughs> I know it. When I was um a, a, like a teenager, I was like 18. My mom made me go on a date with, um she made me go out with like the, the, cousin of our neighbor from italy he was from rome and i had to oh like take God. him out and like show him america but he was like a little <laughs> what older. a big task no it really really was um and this is like not a not a joke no um i took him to like an old timey ice cream shop in uh, on cape cod okay um and he didn't order anything and i just ordered like a small ice cream and <laughs> he took it out of my hand apropos of nothing he took it out of my hands and started like putting ice cream around my mouth and um started licking it off and i shit you not i shit you not his name was giuseppe which is just like and i'm like giuseppe we can't do this here in america giuseppe please giuseppe was so cute and adorable and it was totally fine that he did it um (laughs) and i had no problem with it whatsoever here at reductress we love to help answer the hard questions and probably the most common question we get asked by our readers is can i have a will to live please we constantly get this question and the answer is maybe we don't know, uh, have a cup of coffee or something? So fortunately, we do have a huge box of cold brew here in the office. But the problem with that is like, how do you know if it will give you massive anxiety, diarrhea, or a will to live? It's a total toss up on my end. Absolutely. But uh, we brought in our fellow host, Madison, and gave her a big old cup so that we can find out. Hey, Madison. Hi. So we know you're not like a big coffee drinker, but I mean, how do you feel about having a cup of a cold brew? I'm ready for it. I'm excited. Um, I need it. (laughs) Yeah, I hear that. It's the afternoon. We're all a little tie tie and we need to pick me up. But it's kind of hard to know if that coffee is going to actually like, you know, give you a will to live or just kind of make you shit your pants. Right. 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 Um, So we have a couple questions here that we're going to ask you and we're going to figure out, you know, if this coffee is going to give you anxiety, going to give you the shits or, you know, actually give you some kind of strength to like finish the work day. Okay, cool. Awesome. So what did you put in your coffee? Um, I kind of just took the cold brew and I'm going to just drink it straight up, I just think. Just straight wow. up. So you're taking it black. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Strong. Something to know. Strong choice. Um, and what are you eating with it? Um, I got like a muffin from the farmer's market that was around here. So mm-hmm. I'm hoping that kind of softens the blow. Mm-hmm. 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 We'll see. Yeah. And are you going to drink like all of that yeah that's what i was thinking about doing um yeah are are you sure about that um yeah i think i think i'm sure she seems sure she's i mean okay um all right so we have a little rubric here we're just gonna do some quick calculations 
Um, um, yeah, putting all of this into account. So that's black cold brew. It's going to be running straight through the system. Right through the system. Meeting and up with just a muffin, kind of some simple carbs and sugars. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, ooh, God, I'm sorry, Madison. It looks like you're just going to have anxiety in the shits for the rest of the day. Okay, that that's that's fine with me, honestly. You still have to stay at work. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> and we are going to dock your pay every time you go to the bathroom. We're so. going to count how long you're gone and just calculate accordingly. Yeah, like every time you leave the room, we're going to be like one, two, <laughs> three. Yeah, we're timing it with Sarah <laughs> counting. Yeah, yeah, not I'm just with... running the clock. Yeah. Cool, I can hold it. Okay, so. cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Awesome. All right, awesome. cool. Um, thanks, guys. Yeah, yeah thanks so no, much thank for being you. on. Yeah. You're the best. That was super enlightening. <laughs> um, So... It's currently fall, and we all know what the law says about fall. You have, you have to, to pick, pick your apples and, and do a corn, corn maze, maze, or else you'll lose the giant reality competition called life. So that's why we plucked one of our favorite reductress pieces called I Didn't Come to This Corn Maze to Make Friends, read by Lauren Labgus. And here it is. I didn't come to this corn maze to make friends. Every time I come to a corn maze, my friends make the same fatal mistake. They try to keep things light and fun inside the corn maze. Well, now that we're out of the zip car we rented to take us to beautiful Hudson Valley, New York, I want to make one thing abundantly clear. I did not come to this corn maze to make friends. I hope everybody heard me because it's every woman for herself in this corn maze from here on out. I came here on this weekend girls trip for one reason and one reason alone. To dominate this gorgeously pastoral corn maze and show it once and for all who's boss. Anyone who thinks that we're going to keep laughing and joking and chatting as we wander through the twists and turns of the sacred maze maze is seriously mistaken. This weekend might be about college friends reuniting after five years apart, but this corn maze is about winning, and winning takes focus. So back off, bitches, because I will fucking own this maze. I just love corn mazes. I love all the corn. I love the maze. There are literal acres of labyrinths intricately and painstakingly designed for mind-bending fun. And you think I'm going to let a bunch of lifelong friendships get in the way of all that? Not a chance. If anything, I came here to lose friends. It wouldn't be the first time. Just last year, I got so amped and amazed that Shannon took a train home early. Is that my fault? No, bitch. She couldn't hack it. And that's why this year I'm making rules and setting boundaries. I'm not here to make new friends. And I will ignore my old friends. If someone falls or is lost, I'm going to move on without them. This is war. I mean, this is a corn maze. So if anyone fucks with my maze, I will end them, plain and simple. I mean, I will murder them. I will murder my friends because I don't need to strengthen my female friendships. I need to get my friggin' life inside a corn maze. One thing's for sure, I fucking love corn. Thanks again to Lauren Lapkus for reading that piece, and special thanks to Catherine Lynch for the headline. <laughs> Oh my god, Addy is literally perched on the espresso machine like a quirky little bat. Oh my god, that is so funny. But you shouldn't sit there, girl. We need the espresso. Oh wow, it seems like some bile is leaking from her mouth. Addy, did you put an espresso pod in your mouth or is that bile? Ew, she's so crazy. I love her. Thanks for spending a minute with us. If you have another minute, visit us at reductress.com for more incredible content, including are you dating or just friends who have sex and see each other five times a week? And how I'm decolonizing the sidewalk by pushing white people into the street. If you're new to the Reductress Minute, don't forget to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever else you get your podcasts. Check us out at reductress.com and our store at shop.reductress.com. Special thanks to Lauren Lapkus for reading, Andrew Stuckey for editing this episode, our super quirky intern Addie, and Bowen Yang for our show artwork, and of course to Madison Dillard for drinking that horrible cold brew that destroyed her. She's still working it out. <laughs>